This conference will now be recorded. All right. We'll call this special meeting on the Town Council Subcommittee on Redistricting to order. Today is Tuesday, December 21st. We will rise for a uh, moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. And the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will take a roll call. Councillor Fishbein. Here. Councillor Sandry. Here. And I am here as well. Uh, I will also note. Councillor Morgenstein. Councillor Morgenstein. <clears throat> Sorry, Councillor Morgenstein. I was just taking uh, attendance of the subcommittee members, but I will note that oh, Councillor okay. Morgenstein is here, uh, as is Joan Parisi and June Seichter from the Registrar's Office. Is anybody else from the Registrar's Office here that I've not noted yet? Great. And um, Attorney Small uh, is not available to attend today, but she did. Um, we did have a conversation yesterday. She did contact the subcommittee with the, the responses, which I will read. Uh, and so for just to remind everybody of where we were, the questions were, uh, when do the new districts take effect? Is it for January 1st, 2023 or whenever? Can the town committees be legally elected under the current standards? Uh, with the districts set up as they are, even though they will be changing. And then do any of these changes that we would proceed with in the next year um, or coming weeks or days <clears throat> create vacancies? And then in her opinion, do um, do the committees hold once elected? Um, do they, that being, do they remain as they were, the town committees remain as they were when elected or would vacancies uh, and substitutions be created thereafter. Uh, Attorney Small's response was, I will read it into the record, pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 9-169B, the new districts become effective on the date of adoption by the town council. I have yet to find anything requiring that it be done by the end of this year. Also, town committees under sections 9375B may, during the second calendar year following the year in which the decennial, the decennial census is taken, amend their local rules necessitated by the redistricting. The amendments may be by a majority vote of the members of the town committee at a meeting called for the purpose of considering such amendments. Any such amendments are effective upon filing a copy with the Secretary of the State. So it would seem to me that if the council does not act by the end of the year or the town committee's meeting date, the committee would act based upon the existing districts. They could also notice for the January meeting any amendments to the rules that may be needed to address what to do when the council does approve the changes. If they meet before the effective date of the changes and it results in additional town committee members in a given district, it would seem to me that they must have a procedure for filling vacancies, correct? If not, they should adopt one at their next meeting. The same should be true of a reduction in members. If they do not have a rule for how to deal with this, they can adopt it at their January meeting. She did not find any additional guidance on this. But she notes that she is not an elections as expert. However, she believes this makes sense. If I miss something, let me know and she'll look further. She also commented um, in our conversation before she answered the questions, she wanted it noted too that she is not a direct representative of e uh, a representative of either party or nor a political party town committee otherwise um, official any comments from councilor zandri councilor fishbein councilor yeah, zandri so i'm i'm good so i mean this my my main reason for bringing this up was just to make sure that we didn't have a situation where we ended up accidentally and unintentionally disenfranchising anybody. So 
I'm, I'm content with this because it gives clear direction to both the DTC and the RTC. They are to hold their elections like normal. The people will be, um, you know, at the caucus. They'll be nominated. There'll be a vote by people that are currently in those districts. And then at some point in the future, the town council will ratify the changes that were made. And then it's up to the committees to address those changes at that time. And so to me, this, this, this hits, sits all the points that I was concerned about. So I, I realized it was a little bit of a circus having the item on the agenda, yanked from the agenda, additional discussion, but it, I, I feel it was a worthwhile investment of the time to make sure that the people were clear on where they could go to vote if they so choose. So I appreciate all the extra time and effort that, that was put into this. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. I would agree as well. I know it was a lot more work and uh, it seemed a little dramatic at times and a little chaotic um, with us not knowing what was going on, but I think it was worth the conversation as well. Right. Councilor Fishbein. Yeah, I, I concur with where we end up, which is basically where we were at the time of the starting of the council meeting. Is It was the understanding that there was no rush to do this, that we need to do it right the first time. So I would <clears> expect that during this next few months after the next council gets sworn in, that some sort of committee will be created to address the internal districting, which I think we all recognize is within the purview of the legislative body, not the registrar's office. And that at some point in the next few months, an agenda item will be created that will address the internal redistricting. Um, and that will be adjustment for the DTC and the RTC for their next vote. So I'm comfortable with where we are. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Although you were never elected chairman, but we do by default give you that. No, thank you. Yeah, and I didn't even, we didn't think about that. Sorry. That's okay. Um, great. And then uh, Councilor Morgenstein is also in attendance and she's noted in the chat that she would like to make a comment. Yes, thank you. So it sounds to me like, you know, pretty much done for the moment. I just want to throw out the um, fact that it seems not completely clear to me how the decision of how the um, committee of counselors is going to be made up, but I do want to point out that Mr. Fishbein um, has a vested interest in a big part of the districting, and I would ask that um, ethically it does not seem to make sense to me for Mr. Fishbein to be um, part of this decision making. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I'd i like to know what actual vested interest, since the state has made a determination as to where the boundaries of the 90th district are within Wallingford, the council is not going to change that. So as far as the boundaries within the internal districts, then any elected official would have the same sort of issue i don't think there's an issue if the if the i, I don't balance. i don't think i don't think that there's i don't think there's help. any other councillor morrison just I'm wait sorry. for councillor first okay. to finish any elected official would have any uh, if there is any anything having to do with um ethics or uh, it's just it's there is no ethical matter because we are not changing those lines so I, I just don't get the if there's a claim of an ethical violation make a complaint we'll have a hearing present your case but i i am the one who brought this to the attention of government that the agenda item as presented was wrong nobody disagrees there are significant changes made by the state that now impact Wallingford. The registrar's item only addressed a certain select portion. Should that agenda item pass as it was originally presented and everybody just ignored everything else, which apparently was the plan originally, then there would have been problems. There would have been disenfranchised voters next next election. 
who would have gone to, let's say, the senior center to vote for their normal candidate in the 90th, only to find out that the ballot didn't reflect that, that they were going to vote for a candidate that didn't represent them anymore. That would have been the result. So for one to cast aspersions and claim there's an ethical matter here, those that opposed the action of bringing this to the attention of the council are just looking to disenfranchise those voters that I'm looking to get into their correct area. So bring it on. Yeah, and Council Morrissey, we, we did discuss in the last meeting too, Mr. Ben Martin had, had brought up similar concerns, um, but really that the internalized, the internal districting um, is is a function uh, or more of an operational issue um and and all everyone would have uh, an equal or direct conflict but um it's all kind of relative we were charged with this by the state um and uh i'm not really sure i mean i guess uh, i'll tell you want to throw uh, out the balancing because we're, uh, we're not we're not representing council morgan seems still <laughs> speaking um we're not represented by district uh so it's it's just in how it's the easiest way to collect the votes um i am going to also note that mr avery uh, from the registrar's office is in attendance and now it looks like uh, councillor testa has joined in and as uh, as well as councillor elect sam carmody um we're gonna um councillor morgan jason has asked to speak um then you can come back around to you councillor sandry yes thank you so Councilor Morgenstein, just, just so that I understand, is your concern more about the local districts or the 90th district? I want to wanna ask you because I want to understand what your concerns are. My concern is there is only one member of the town council who also serves as a state representative. And I believe uh -huh. that the 90th district, it was changed at the state level and it may mm -hmm. all turn out to be that there's nothing at the local level that would make the vote within the 90th which is now a completely different district be able to be chosen by councillor slash state rep fishbein to be impacted by him being part of the looking at where it all goes the final vote i am just raising the issue that we have a counselor that is also a state rep okay, and i thanks. want to raise that as it's it's what we've got and i believe that we have to at the very least consider that there's an issue there i i i appreciate i appreciate you bringing up the the thought process because it's important but i i got to concur with what else has been said already the the state district boundaries are already drawn what's out of sync right now are the local districts of which there there's no impact by by any of us if if we were district elected then we would have a much larger concern i would agree um, because we're all at large i i think there's a pretty big non-issue and and there's no way for example of any state rep let's not necessarily pick on craig but craig's the only example but there's no way he can manipulate, let's say, District 7 to include more voters to vote for him on the representative level by making changes to the local districts because the local districts must match. Because when they don't, that's when we've got a situation where someone shows up at, at some voting district and they have to be given one ballot or the other because the, the majority of one district is for the 90th and then the minority of the district might be for the 85th and that's what redrawing the local lines is going to get rid of when these people show up in district 7 they're wholly voting for their representatives at the local level and then somebody in the 90th district only there's no crossover so i think i think the, the concern mm -hmm. is always a valid one are there any conflicts and should they be expressed or addressed it's always important to bring it up but i don't i don't want to make the situation worse than actually it's just 
there's, in my opinion, and I'm not an elections expert either, um, just like Janice Small had indicated, I don't think there's any way for anybody to manipulate a local district and make it more favorable to them, council, board of ed, mayor, or even state reps, because the lines are drawn at the state level. That's just my thought process behind it. But I appreciate that you brought up the concerns, and I and I think it's important anytime any of us feel like, hey, there might be a conflict of interest here, we should at least express it. But I I don't I don't see one here. But that's just my thought process. But th thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to speak again. Thank you, Councilor Zandria. And Council Morrison, I forgot to answer your other question about who will be on the committee. That would be up to the next council on how, and whether there's a subcommittee or it's done again. This committee will cease to exist on January 3rd or whatever it is. Um, so um, a whole new group or a whole new group could be could be chosen. Uh, Council Morgan, did you have anything else? No, I've said what I had to say, but I appreciate <clears throat> having the chance to say it. Thank you. Great, thank you. Are there any other um, questions this is or Joe. comments? Yeah, Joe. Uh, this is Joe. Go ahead. Um, I just want to make a note that um, once these districts are drawn and you have the council has voted on them. It's up to the registrar's office to make sure that everyone that's in a different district from where they are now gets notification. I mean, everyone is notified of what their new district and their voting place will be. So if someone's concerned about people going and thinking they're voting for someone that they're no longer voting for, um, all these voters are notified. Yes. No, thank you. And I think um, the earlier comment was more reference that now we will have the appropriate time. So there will, to make, you guys will have enough time to do everything without worrying about rushing and, yes. um, you know, good process. Right. Good yes. Just and now if, if, if we want to, if, if the registrar's office comes before the council um, when this is next on the new council's agenda, um, and we have a proposal to modify District 1 and District 9 to make where these voters actually go to vote, um, we will have the option to do that. Great. Tom, Councilor just to Thank you. Just to point out, the area that was addressed by the agenda item as originally presented was the uh, Cass Avenue North Cherry area of the town. Correct. Yes. There's other areas of the town, like Edgerton Road, which is almost into North Haven. Presently, mm -hmm. presently, those individuals vote in the... Um, well, they're going to be voting. At Rock Hill. Yeah, at Rock Hill. No, they don't. No, not Egerton Road. That little slice oh. on the easterly side of 91 um, yeah. is part of the different district. They vote, I think, yeah, got for changed. Mary Mashinsky. Okay, that's their current. I just, I'm just pulling up the voting district map. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, Actually, they vote, yes, um, they're part of the 4th District. Oh, okay, so that's definitely. Okay, you see, in the, mm -hmm. the lower area of the 4th District. So let's just take Edgerton Road. Right now, mm -hmm. their district, they would vote where the 4th District votes. As mm -hmm. part of the state's redistricting, yeah. they would not be voting for Mary Mashinsky or her opponent, mm -hmm. they would instead be voting for whomever is run, is is in the 90th. So Correct. you've got somebody who lives at Edgerton Road. Mm -hmm. The council the council has not redrawn the lines with regard to that area because there was no agenda item that directed okay. 
right? Okay. So yeah. my point is, if the only thing that we had addressed was that area of the eighth, which mm -hmm. has changed, then that right. individual who presently lives at Edgerton Road, when they go to their polling place, because mm -hmm. the council had not changed them, they're going to be allowed to vote right. at District 4. But based upon the new state lines, they, they yes. are supposed to be represented by someone in the 90th. And that is Correct. where the disenfranchisement would have happened because you have somebody voting for a representative who no longer represents them in Hartford. Mm -hmm. So that was my point. We right. have to do all and, of and this together. So, uh, you know, our discussion within the registrar's office was because people even at Regent Court um, have to go to Rock, right now they go to Rock Hill to vote and they're traveling miles. And our, our proposal, if we have the opportunity, would be to horizontally divide District 1 and District 9. So that District 1 votes at Pond Hill, and District 9 at the moment would vote at Rock Hill when we're looking to attempt to change the voting place. But that's going to have to, to be done after the first of the year. But my, I guess my question is, will we have the opportunity to present that change to the council. Yes, you um, you'll present. Um, we'll figure out a time at the beginning, probably the beginning of the term, to do that. Um, somewhere as you were in December, it got pulled because of confusion and questions. The, right. the yes. all of this came up because then there was a concern about the urgency of timing. Um, so that yes. that's really what we were designed to to immediately address. Okay. Um, and then okay. we did. It, if there was a a concern for timing, we we would be helping. Um, you guys move things along, but the timing thing has mm -hmm. been resolved, and you guys right. are. I know you. I, I discussed it in the last meeting too. Um, you guys are already kind of on the side working on all this, um, even without the council yes. charge or approval. So, um, you know, thank you for all that. Sure. But yes, it'll it'll come back before the council, and you and Mr. Avery will be able to present. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Are, you're welcome. No, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Um, anybody from the public that would like to speak? Councilor Tessa? I, I do have a question. Sure. I just, thank you. Um, clarification on uh, what Ms. Parisi just said. Hi, Joan. Hi. How are you? Thanks for all the work you've done, Robert. Thank you. Um, it sounded to me like what you had just talked about was was a change that was exceeded or was separate from redrawing the district lines to to correlate with the state lines. Did I miss something? Okay. Well, well District but 1 and District 9 are in the 90th district, so that wouldn't change. I'm sorry, can you re repeat that? District 1 and District 9 are both in the 90th district, right. the legislative district. So yeah. we're just proposing to divide it horizontally so that people aren't having to drive 10 miles to go vote when they could drive a mile to vote. But that, but my point is that's a, that's a different uh, fix, if you will. Um, that's a that's an internal that's an internal state uh, town fix. It has nothing to exactly. do with the state, exactly. right? I guess what I, I just want to understand that because I I think it's I think it's important that we, um, given the little bit of time we've had to talk about this, that we at this point understand the difference between changes that are being made so that town and state district lines uh, correlate. And any, other, and any other changes that are proposed for any other reason whatsoever, 
because uh, I've heard other ones too. And so I think there would mm-hmm. be, I think it's important just to keep that separate as far as when it's being presented. Right. I just wanted to make sure I understood that. I'm not saying what you're suggesting is a bad idea because it could be a great right. idea. But what? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yes, go ahead. Get, as soon as we get into redrawing local districts, for reasons that have nothing to do with adhering to the state redistricting, we're we're talking about a different set of tenants that we need to pay attention to, and and I think that might require a little more time and discussion. What I my understanding of what we're doing now is let's let's move as quickly as we can, just to make sure that the districts match um, the state. Yeah. And okay, Correct. so thank you for clarifying that. I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Testa. Tom, just to be clear, just and I, maybe I could just confirm through Joan. Presently, District One is not in the 90th, but it's going to become part of the 90th. Correct. So because pre- yes, that's yeah, correct. So right now it's part of the 86th. So right, right now we have to treat that area separately and give it its own district. So because they're merging, it gives us the opportunity to balance out the disparity between one and nine. Is that's what you're saying? Correct. correct? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Great. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, Councilors Fishbein or Zandri, any choice to do anything different than just let this go and have the new, new council take it over? I mean, I think that's it's fine to do. We have this information and it's been kind of reported out. I didn't know if, uh, I think Lauren's question was addressed, but it's in the chat. Yes, I think I took your answer to be for that. Um, yes, sorry, uh, comment from uh, Fran LaFrance Preschino. Yeah, I just want to restate we need to be as minimal in our changes as possible because people are still confused about where they vote. Ten years ago, it was mass confusion. It's going to be that again if we start really making large swath uh, changes. I I think we have to be as delicate with this change as possible. Don't renumber districts. Don't make huge. Yeah, I, I am in agreement with one and nine being separated horizontally if that meets the necessary criteria. I'm also in agreement with Mr. Testa that the um, the two subjects might be better suited to be separated um, so that the public understands precisely why certain changes are being made. But I think um, the least amount of changes is our best bet because otherwise people are going to get thoroughly confused, even more than they are now. And, and I can confidently state uh, in all my conversations with everybody in the registrar's office, they've, they have all independently said the same thing. They are looking to not do some massive overhauls, just tidy up, um, if for no other reason than it, to lessen the confusion. Um, but it, it's just unnecessary extra work um, for everybody. So they're they're trying to keep it as minimal as possible. Excellent. Yeah, I, I'm in agreement with the changes that they had proposed. I thought that was very good. Um, but any large swath changes, I think, are, are unproductive. And just thought I'd add my uh, support to that. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Stephen Tomzak, do you have a, a comment? If so, your mic is not on. Hi, I'm Mary Ellen Crawford. I'm with Stephen Tomzak. Great. Um, I'm uh, concerned. Just your address um, for the record, too, please. Oh, sure. 60 Morningside Terrace. Thank you. And thank you. Um, I'm wondering what the town is going to do to educate the citizens about the new districts voting, because there's always confusion. Um, is there something that can be done to educate the town in upcoming elections, or like way before? And even like the, the vote, I know this is related and unrelated, but I think if we educate the citizens, um, they're more likely to vote and not get so confused. 
There will be, um, as, as the registrars had noted uh, earlier and in prior conversations, they will be reaching out to all of the affected voters uh, about their, their polling place. They may even choose to just let everybody know where they're voting, even if it hasn't changed. Um, but there, there will be a very, very focused and concerted effort on notifying anybody that has, has changed through mailings and other notifications. Okay, thank you. Thank um, you. I might express more in the future um, sure. at future meetings just to um, help clarify things. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Sandry. Yeah, um, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I kind of want to piggyback on on those comments because I think it's important to note that when you have a change like this, it's definitely important that we we make a degree of education or, or informing of the electorate that there's been changes made. But I I also want I also wanted to make the point that the registrar's office and even even the candidates themselves even when they're campaigning, they do a lot of education of what I'll call on the spot, right? So the registrars are, are, I'll use that as an example, during Celebrate, now I know we haven't had a formal Celebrate in the past couple of years, except for that small gathering downtown this year. But as we get back to that, anytime we had Celebrate Wallingford, the, re, the, the you know, voter registration booth was there, the registrars sat there, they always answered questions. So if people had them, there were they were able to get information. So there's always a, a campaign of educating the voters. Now I agree that what we probably should do is have something very detailed and very specific. Um, I know that a couple of probably a term ago, Councillor Fishbein and I joked about the fact that we were running against one another because we were over each other on the ballot. We even got to the point where we thought it would make sense to go to WPAA and basically do a little five minute infomercial on the fact that we're all at large and you can vote for people that are above one another. They're not running against one another. But I, and the reason I point that out is no matter how much sometimes education and information out there, there's always some people that are going to be confused. And all we can do is continually support giving them the information, making it available through the registrar's office, through the booth at Celebrate Wallingford, as we go out and talk to people, the, the ongoing repetitive information is what's best. These changes occur every 10 years, this redistricting, and, and we've gotten to the point where we're in, in another scenario of it. And I agree we need to try to keep it as simple as possible, but, but there's always going to be a degree of ongoing and continuing education when it comes to, to getting the people to understand where they're supposed to vote. So I, you know, I want to say that I agree with the concerns, but I want to make people understand that there's always an ongoing effort to make sure the voters have as much information as they want to get. And it's, it's up, you know, we already do it pr pretty proactively. Could we do more? Sure. And if there's good ideas, then they should be brought to the attention of the registrars or to the committees, the, the RTC and the DTC about, how they can do that. But I, I think that there's always a level of confusion depending on the person's familiarity with voting in their hometown. So, but I do appreciate the concerns. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Zandri. Any other questions or comments? If not, we're gonna wrap up and adjourn this meeting. Uh, Mr. Blake, name and address for the record, please. Uh, Welcome Street, Wallingford. Uh, Thanks, Chris Blake. For the record. Like, I I echo the do it more, get ringing it to the people of going to the press, doing an email. It's not this expected people to go to town hall or their library to find out. You need to get their information to the people. It's not expect them. To find their information and then ask questions. Great. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else anyone that would else like to speak? Uh, yes, I uh, yes, I would. Jim Sykes at 163 Grebe Road. Hey, Jim. You know, I, I agree with some of the comments people make about education and make, making people uh, know where they uh, where they uh, should vote, but 
to me, I think, you know, self-education is the best education. We have the registrar's number certainly is, uh, you know, is published in the uh, uh, online. People who have a question as far as where they should vote, uh, to me, the very simple thing is to simply contact the registrar's office, name an address, and they would be able to tell people where, uh, you know, what polling place they should go to the vote. To me, that seems to be very simple. Uh, certainly, you know, to publish it in the paper, that's all beneficial and to reach out to people. But again, to me, the most easiest way to do it is ask the question directly at the registrar's office. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seitzer. Any additional comments? Seeing none, I will uh, adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much, everybody.